Good morning, Howard Hanna. Happy Friday. You know the drill. I hope this isn't the first uh, Friday webinar you've joined us on. We've usually have to give it just a couple minutes for everyone to um, log on. We've got a pretty big crowd, an incredible panel today. Normally I get a bunch of good morning chats, but apparently, where, where is everyone telling me good morning? Good morning, Kate. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Oh, there we go. Good Thank morning. you, everyone. Okay, I see all these capital Tony's giving me a hard time now. So this is um, our monthly um, Friday webinar. It's actually um, usually hosted by Hobie Hanna, who um, has handed off the hosting um, role to myself and Ann Kiner, who um, is our South Regional here in Ohio. Um, he has to take his daughter to college. So we are very excited for this panel and um, filling in for him. Hopefully people are just grabbing their coffee and they're gonna be joining us here in a moment. Um, while they keep chiming on, I'm just gonna go over a few logistics that I'm sure we'll be reminded of. Um, for those of you that have a question for the panel at any point, please put it in the Q&A, uh, not the chat. The chat is a perfect opportunity to just respond to people um, within the meeting. If you just have something that's um, just to you know, talk to someone, say hello, answer a question for someone in the actual panel, but questions for uh, the panels, if it's a question, please leave it in the Q&A. So let's talk about this month's theme. Well, it looks like those numbers might still be crawling up there a little bit. All right, so I just wanna remind everyone, the second uh, Friday of the month, uh, through the end of the year, the education team in Hobie has created a great um, uh, theme for each month. And please mark your calendar. The second Friday of every month, we will be having a panel of your peers, experts um, in whatever that topic is. And this month's topic is really about getting listings. And everything that Howard Hanna has is really focused on getting listings. Every tool, every program, every differentiator is about getting listings. So we have a uh, group here of top agents that will share with us how they've leveraged those um, technology tools, our different programs um, on their listing appointments to actually walk away always getting that listing. So some, um, some things that we will be discussing, so if you do have a question um, for the featured programs, we're definitely gonna be talking about Money Back Guarantee, which was our first Wednesday webinar. If you have questions about that, it is on the Howard Hanna YouTube channel. Uh, the Buy Before You Sell program, and then Find It First or HANA Exclusives. For our um, MarTech tools, which if you aren't familiar with the term MarTech, it means marketing technology. And MarTech tools that we'll be discussing absolutely buy side. Um, Real Scout, how you've used that uh, in uh, listing presentations, and then Moxie products, which include Engage, uh, which hopefully a lot of people saw the Engage 2.0, HANA presentations, and then Impress, which will eventually make its way through all of our markets. That is my beginning spiel. I'm gonna introduce Ann Kiner, who will then go move forward here, if you're just joining us. Ann Kiner is our South uh, Regional here in Ohio. Um, her and myself are now taking over as the host for Hobie's webinar today, and there you go. Oh, thank you. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to see how many people are on this call. Gosh, we're well over 200 people, and um, really appreciate the attendance and hope that you walk away with some, some wonderful ideas um, from, from our three fabulous agents that have joined us today. We have Molly Finley from our Fox Chapel uh, Pennsylvania office. So Molly, thank you very much for joining us. And we have uh, Teresa Whit Whittem from um, the Solon office here in Ohio. And we have Paul Sacco from Utica, New York. I did say Utica, right? Correct? Right. Too hard for but it's close enough. All right. all right, well, so thank you. Thank you to all three of you uh, for, for joining us. And as Kate mentioned um, throughout the presentation, if you have any uh, you know, questions for the panels, please use the Q&A section. So, um, Kate, you want to maybe kick us off with our first question? Absolutely, Anne. I already feel like we're a really good co-host. I feel it. Like, I feel it. Yeah, it's, it's okay. feeling okay. good. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So our first question, and probably one of our most popular um, HANA programs, is the money-back guarantee. 
um, if you guys can all share maybe a time where you've uh, included the money back guarantee program to secure a listing. Do you keep it as part of all of your listing presentations? Is it uh, a way that you have really used um, on that uh, with the seller to secure the listing? Molly, you wanna start? You're the first one in my corner. Yeah, sure. So um, I put the money back guarantee on every single listing. There really isn't a reason not to use it. I explained to the seller that it's free to you to use, free to use to you. Um, we get to put the name writer that says money back guarantee on their sign. And then also I describe, you know, the little money back guarantee icon on the website. If you sign up for this, then we get to use the icon on the website. Usually once they think about the icon, then it comes together and they're like, okay, great. So I put it on every single listing, even if it's something that doesn't qualify for it, I keep it in the marketing package so that they know it's a thing that we offer. Right. I've had a good story I can share too, where I had a listing and a Howard Hanna buyer came and they actually wanted us to, they wanted to initiate the money back guarantee. This, you know, in Cleveland, we have three major healthcare providers, and this was a resident um, who was looking to get matched. So he knows he would stay in Cleveland, but he hadn't yet be matched. So he wanted to use money back guarantee just in case he was matched outside of the city. And it worked out very well. It's an easy story to explain why a buyer would want the money back guarantee. And I think it illustrates pretty well. And then I usually go forward and I say during COVID-19, buyers really do want to take advantage of our low, low interest rates and they want to buy. But if there's any thought in their mind that they might get furloughed in the next year, this would be a secure move for them to make. So I think illustrating why a buyer would want to buy a house with money back guarantee also helps the sellers uh, sign up. As with Molly, I use it in every single presentation, listing presentation I go on. There's no one else in our area that does it. There's over 500 agents here. And when you explain it's 100% money back guarantee, a lot of them think it's got something to do with them giving them back their money. So it's right. an education process, definitely. And when you're going against another agency and they say, well, you know, I'll take a discount for you. And then you jump into, the, you know, if you're getting a discount, there's a reason they're giving you a discount. They're not doing the same things we are. And the moment you can come back and say, I'm gonna give you a 100% money back guarantee to the person who purchases your house. It's an option for them, it doesn't cost you anything. And they look at you like they're profound, like it's, it's a crazy option and that they don't have to pay for it. That usually clinches the deal after I do a little bit more uh, discussion, but that really is one of our biggest assets we have is that nobody else in our area has it. One, I'm gonna have one two follow-up questions. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm really quick. So you, you all said that you include it in your listing presentation. Do you actually include a marketing piece on it or just the actual paperwork? So if I were a new agent going on an appointment, what really do you bring to, to start that conversation? You've got to bring a couple of the marketing pieces with you because it's something to hand them. They, this way they have something in their hand. <clears throat> a lot of agents do everything virtual now on their computer, they're showing them on their phone, they're doing, and that's a lot of the millennials. And I will say that. I see a lot of the millennials, no paperwork whatsoever, all on their iPad, all on their phone. Our area still has a lot of people who get the newspaper. I know it's hard to believe in the cities you guys are in, but these people wanna hold on to something. You give them the pamphlet and you're just going through the highlights with them. They may not understand it completely, but now they've seen the high points and they said, oh, that's, that's a great idea. I can't believe you guys can offer that. Absolutely. And I have, I've not had anyone not sign. Yeah, I bring the, um, I include the, the, in the HANA presents the money back guarantee information. I also bring the seller application with me. So I'll touch on the highlights of it that I think the seller needs to know to get them to sign it but I'll leave the detailed information in the packet so they can read all about it later to cover the, the parts I didn't answer. Kate, I just wanted to share a story too. You know, usually as a regional, when a client's calling me, um, most often than not, they're, they're miffed about something, right? So um, what we have to keep in mind too, as Howard Hanna agents is we're all blessed to, for the most part, be in market areas where we have market share. So a lot of times um, clients, they're, they're interviewing, you know, one of us, two of us, sometimes three of us, right? And you don't want to be, 
the listing agent that never mentions it because at one point in time we had a, a seller call me who was very, very upset that their listing agent had not shared anything about the money back guarantee with them. And when they were going through negotiations um, with a prospective buyer, this buyer adamantly, adamantly wanted money back guarantee, had been educated on, on the fact that it was a Howard Hanna program with their agent and asked for it. And it was really instrumental. I mean, that deal almost didn't come together because that seller didn't have it. And the seller had, uh, had never been given the option, had never been told about it. So you don't want to be, you don't want to be that, that listing agent who hasn't offered up one of our, um, you know, our perks to our, to our listings because it, it, when it comes to light, sometimes it doesn't go over that well. So I just wanted to mention that. And you want to take over that second question? Oh, I'm sorry, Molly, did you want to ask? I'm going to quickly say, I don't think I've ever had a seller refuse to sign the money back guarantee. And remember, sometimes our corporate office will give us extra advertising or boosting, especially when we were doing open house weekends. Sometimes they were featuring only money back guarantee homes. And I thought that to the sellers, it might get us more uh, coverage and, and more uh, promotion power by offering it even through our corporate office. So I think the, uh, the, really the next question that I think would help be very helpful to everybody is how do you how do you use um, our tools and our differentiators to help ensure that you're getting a full commission right so we are we all know there's brokerages out there that are that are discount companies and, and we are certainly not that um, how do you position that in your conversations with with the sellers um, in terms of, of you know linking our differentiation differentiators with um, a full commission. Teresa, you want to start? Sure. So when I when I talk about commission, I often we use the blended rate here and the blended rate works really well for us, but I already calculate what it is on a flat. So when you say 7% on the first 100,000 and 5% on the remainder, their mind doesn't stick on seven. I actually kind of tell them what that would come to at a, a normal sale price for them first of all, because that, that kind of ramps it down right away. But I say you pay what you get for. Um, of course, somebody will take their listing um, for a lower commission rate. There's always going to be those people out there. But I would challenge them when they interview me versus interviewing them, what does their marketing plan look like? And what kind of tools are they using to promote their house and bring buyers in? Because you get what you pay for in the end. I go through like, will your discount broker use drone photos? Will your discount broker be using social media and internet ads? Are they going to be on AdWorks uh, doing some, some banner ads and, and some promotion on the side of uh, special sites like the Golf Channel and CNN and ABC News? Um, are they going to be doing, uh, using a software like our, our buyer, a buy side to match up buyers with our sellers and bring people in so we can start to uh, bring buyers to the sellers? Um, I talk about the high-end collateral that we have now through Impress, which I've printed off several times, and it's really cool. It's simple, it's clean, it's branded. I really like it. Um, so I just challenge them that when they talk about commission, they talk about the marketing plan and the promotion plan at the same time. That's great, great, thank you. Paul, oh, what about you? Well, I'm in a small area, as you know. We have 500 agents in my small metropolitan area that we have here. And there is a, a, a discount brokerage um, who I do not seem to run against. But then there is another hometown grown agency. Uh, they listed something yesterday for 1.75%. Oh. So um, I, will, I have gone against them several times. Um, and, what, and they do Matterport. They do drone photos. They have a van that they'll let uh, their client choose to move them. So they've tried everything possible to secure the, their space in the market. Um, I have not lost a listing to them, you'll be glad to say, and, and I have not discounted my listing. Um, you know, I go with a full packet when I go to a listing presentation. I've got my RPR report, um, I've got my CMA, I've got my HANA presentation, and then I bring our advertising. I bring our, our, our print advertising. I bring um, my laptop because I do do some small uh, video movie teasers that I put out on a Friday night when the house lists on Monday. Um, so that kind of really sets me apart from a lot of people. Um, I show them 
all the marketing that we do locally here, plus what I do myself. I just don't do social media. That, that discount company, that's all they do is social media. There's nothing else. So if they want a discount, and then I, I and, and this may sound pompous, in case any of you don't know me, I'm not, I'm kind of a funny guy, but um, I always go back to, okay, how much did that salesperson sell last year? What was their closing rate? What did they do? And usually the discounted people do very little. They're nowhere near anybody at Howard Hanna. And that really, and the buy side just cements that you have these people looking and between buy side, uh, the app, Real Scout, our newsletter, I sit with them. By the time I get done and have them sign the listing agreement, I have them signed up for everything before I leave. And you are in their face consistently. 100% of my business is referral. 100%. You know, Paul, I just want to just, you just really set me up for like a little plug here and I have to take it. I apologize, Molly. I think you're next. Um, I mean, you are very spot on. I, I mean, we are in their face consistently, but it's with tools that are meaningful. It's not like a sales pitch all the time. You know, Real Scout's fascinating. The app is helpful. And the, and the best part about this, this next webinar, that is next Wednesday, which actually I will be teaching with some people from the education team is the automated systems that Howard Hanna provides you makes your life so easy. You know, you don't have to go in, you click once and everything's done for you. And it's a great way to stay top of mind. It's really going to help that referral business. So I just really wanted to take the opportunity, Paul, I, I couldn't have, I, I literally didn't pay him to say any of that, but it felt like such a softball for me for the next, next webinar. The automated systems make life easy peasy. The real stuff, I have people call me and go, Paul, you just sent me this one. And, and then you have to go quick on your app to see what you sent them. And, you know, we have a small town and I'm out in the public face a lot. And they'll say, oh my God, I, I want my mother to get this because she's going to be looking for a house. People love Real Scout. I am the biggest proponent of Real Scout. If you do nothing else, Real Scout is the thing to do. It's your silent salesperson who is always helping your clients. It's amazing. I love the way you put that. That's great. Molly, anything to add? Yeah, um, I mean, everything everyone said I agree with, um, and I'm taking like little tips from each of you guys for when I go on my appointments, but um, I don't really negotiate commission. It's not really a discussion I'm open to. I'll go through my entire Hannah Presents. I load my presents up with every single um, marketing program tool that we offer, and I'll go through the, the presentation with them. And then sometimes at the end, they'll say, oh, well, what's your commission? And I'll tell them what it is. And then they'll say, well, you know, Agent ABC said they would do it for this. And I said, oh, really? Um, what marketing tool are they taking out to give you that commission? Because I don't know what you would want to take out of this, but you'll get all of them with me. And then usually they're like, I just stay quiet. And then they're like, huh. And they you know, it clicks in their head and then they just move on. So it's pretty easy to overcome that obstacle when you show everything you're doing and you don't have to piece things together so the seller can get what, you know, they want at a certain commission price, so. Teresa, I saw you pointed, like you totally agreed with that. Do you, in your present, I mean, are all of you using Hannah presentations or at least coming with that packet of like, look at what Han Howard Hannah can provide you? Yes, I even add that sheet that's in the marketing tool that you go into other tools and get that says what you get with Howard Hanna and what you get with discount brokers. And I kind of go through that and I've already circled and highlighted some of my favorite things. And I say, this is what's going to differentiate any Howard Hanna agent that you talk to versus a co-broke. And this is what will differentiate me from other Howard Hanna agents. So I know before the questions roll in, the, the form she's talking about, it's on GoHanna. If you search for Howard Hanna Real Estate Services, pick the most updated one. It, it actually has you know, what you get with Howard Hanna, what you get with another full service broker, and then what you get with, with a limited service broker. And if you're a newer agent or if you're worried about that first listing appointment, it, it is a talking point after talking point. Well, this is a tool that we can do. This is a tool we can do. Um, make sure you have the updated one that says Real Scout on it. There is, I think, an older one that might say Home Finder. So just make sure you have the updated one. It's a great, it's a great piece of marketing material. Yeah. There were two questions that came in. Uh, oh, the blended rate. So Teresa had started talking about a blended rate and commission. I think that um, that's more common probably in, in her market. Maybe something we can discuss offline. Um, 
this was a question for Paul. Paul, what did that company that you that has the moving truck and all that stuff, what were they going to charge? Someone was curious. Well, it's funny because that's a company I started and left. Um, so I seem to go against them once in a while. They have charged between 1.5, very rarely is there a 3%, very rarely. But I have not lost a listing for them. Well, that's, a, that, that's pretty, that's impressive. And, um, and, and then... And I always uh, go back to what have they closed last year? Thank God I had a personal best last year because I use that constantly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, I do want to mention, uh, Eric had just said, um, sellers are coached to ask the commission question and then the typ it's typically awkward after they ask. Uh, it's just kind of um, reiterating what Molly said. Uh, the one line answer, you know, what are they taking out of their marketing package and then silence. Just be quiet and let them let it click. Don't, Don't say anything. Let them talk first. <laughs> yeah. Silence is the best answer you could ever give somebody when they ask you about commission. <laughs> give them I agree that. Idea, and then you, and it's tough for me to be quiet. And let me tell you, they all. <laughs> Paul, I'm with you. It's I, I'm working on it. I've learned in these panels, I got to be quiet a little bit. Uh, this is a great question, actually, that just came in that I think is a, a good time to ask. When you guys are doing these promotional um, pieces, these activities, do you um, do you have that available? Uh, would it be good to have this information available, like as a uh, door knocker, maybe as like a little piece to get them um, interested, or do you wait till you have the listing to go over all of that? Do you use this to try to pull someone in, or do you wait until you're actually on a listing appointment to discuss it? I think that's what Shauna is asking. I would say it depends on your market, how you go about your marketing. Um, you know, I, I will market in the newspaper um, and on social media, but I don't, I don't do door knockers or cold calling or follow up with expireds. I know some people love that, but that's not my spiel, not my persona. For me, sometimes if I know I'm going on an appointment, I'll email. I use Hannah Presents all of the time for everything. I love it. But I'll email like a portion of the presents where I pull just the um, whatever marketing pieces I want to show them. I don't like to give everything away. They still need a reason to meet with me. So I'll kind of just tease out some of it. Um, really same with, with Paul, email, social, stuff like that. But I think door knockers, we use them in our market and they, they're they a really great idea. I, I say I'm gonna do them. I haven't done them yet, walk my dog around and like hang them, but I think it's a really effective tool in our market here in Pittsburgh. Well, Molly, you now said that out loud to 303 people. So you actually have to go <laughs> walk the dog with- for it. Yeah, I'll get it done. <laughs> Report back. Um, I'm gonna take this next question. And I think Anne probably as a regional would have some, some good answers for this, but obviously wh whoever is able to chime in. Um, how have you used the buy before you sell mortgage tool to overcome some objections, especially in the market right now, to get those listings? How do you position that? How do you bring that up to potential clients? So I, you know, I think it's safe to say with uh, 300 people on this call that, that the vast majority have probably heard a client say, um, I can't put my house up for sale because I don't know where I'm going to go. Right? So and then you know they they don't want they don't want to look because or they don't want to sell because they don't have a place to go and they feel like they can't they can't find a place to go um, because their house isn't sold and it becomes a vicious a vicious circle right so you know with equity is just at such an all time high in this country and there are so many people that that just have a ton of it waiting to be tapped into so that they can go ahead and make a purchase um, when maybe they didn't originally feel comfortable doing it that way. So, you know, I would venture to say that most agents don't know the absolute ins and outs of buy before you sell, but we're also really blessed because we have an incredible team of, of um, you know, finance managers in our company, right? So all you have to do is, is plant the seed that there's this program out there that it's available, connect them with your loan officer. And then when that person, you know, and really you're all doing this oriented around getting a listing, right? So if you can make that person comfortable to, to finally be able to buy when they find a house they like, what's that gonna turn into? It's gonna turn into a listing. So um, it, it, I, I see people do it all the time, at least in the, the Ohio market, it, it bring, that, bring that up to get those dominoes to start falling and so that next thing we know, we're listing another house. So that's, that's where I see it. Anybody else use it? Um, on listing appointments, I'll ask the sellers, hey, like, what are your next steps 
do you have to sell this house to buy? Do you prefer to sell this house to buy? And they usually don't know. And I say, well, if you want to, I can connect you with my loan officer and we can talk to see if we have a special program that you might be able to buy before you sell. And then I just make the connection. I don't, um, like Anne said, I don't dive that much further into it because I don't know all of the details um, to explain it like my loan officer would be able to. So I just, I pass them off to them. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just going to kind of tie a few things together here. Um, if you can get people on um, Real Scout, I mean, the second they start seeing all these cool houses, I mean, I, I laugh. I think Real Scout is honestly like a dating app for the home search between the stuff you get to pick that you like and you don't like and swiping on things. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous when you have that app. Um, you start seeing someone, I mean, I have, I have friends that I just put on it um, from all my trainings. I just like find an email and I, I put that on. And you see someone looking at a house five, six, seven times. And then you're like, well, are you, I mean, you keep looking at this house and they're like, why? Well, I really don't, I'm not moving. I don't want to sell. I, I really, I mean, I'm just looking at this because it's fun to look at my neighbor's houses or whatever. I mean, it's a great conversation started to say, well, have you considered, I mean, selling? Like, this is a great market. You've been looking at this house enough. I mean, why don't, why don't we talk about that? And, well, I can't afford anything until I sell. Then that's a great conversation about the buy before you sell. I think the one thing that people need to recognize is that all of these tools can just go into the, and Anne just said it great with the buy before you sell. Every one of our tool, tools and programs is just a stepping stone to the conversation to get a listing. I mean, Real Scout can be turned into getting a listing. Um, buy before you sell, money back guarantee. All of them, if you can just flip that around to get the listing, uh, I mean, then you, you've done it, you've done it right. I see some things and questions in chats. Yes, Real Scout does rock. <laughs> I would add to that too, when I'm going through um, a CMA and I'm talking about what a, a price opinion might be and what the expectation should be for timeliness and days on market. Uh, when you see days on market less than 90 days, you easily can talk about and empathize with how stressful it is to be a seller, to open their house and have showings and have to remove the family. You can empathize that this is not a seller centric kind of process for them to go through. If they are lucky enough to qualify to buy before they sell, I encourage them to have that conversation with my Howard Hanna mortgage officer because uh, he does work with different lenders. He will have different options for them, but the, you know, their fear of double payments or a payment with a bridge loan, that doesn't really kick in. We just talked about it at our Tuesday sales meeting, and that doesn't kick in until the 91st day. So if the days on market are showing that we're selling in 30 or 45 or 60 days, this should be a more comfortable leap for them to really have a hearty conversation with our mortgage rep about buying before they sell and to feel more comfortable with the bridge loan if it's a 90 day before they see multiple payments. That's a great, that's a great point, Teresa. I mean, that's absolutely. Um, and you have a question directed. I saw directed that. To you. So I'm going to read it out loud for everyone. Um, what I'm having trouble with is that people are wanting to move out of state and are nervous to sell because of COVID. How do I convince them to sell and purchase in a different state under these circumstances? Okay, so I completely agree with this, right? It is a little bit more difficult and it's such a different market now, you guys. So, uh, you know, a, a year ago, I think sellers would, you know, be very impressed with our marketing activities if they went on the market and we, you know, we showed their house 30 times, right? Um, that was almost like the symbol of whether we were doing our job. Uh, they loved, sellers loved showings. Now they want their house sold, but they don't necessarily want 30 people in their house given COVID circumstances, right? So this plays um, and ties in so wonderfully with um, kind of what the market times are that we're experiencing, at least here in Ohio. I mean, we have so many listings that are selling in a matter of, you know, one, two, three days. And so that is what the beauty of Find It First is all about on, on, a, on a Friday, right? So, so list the property on a Friday, get it into howardhanna.com that's got, you know, millions of unique visitors every month, get that exposure. You've got, at least in our area, and I'm sorry if this isn't true in other states, you guys can chime in, but we, we only have 24 hours from when, from when a property is first publicly marketed, and that would include like putting it on something like howardhanna.com to get it into the MLS, right? So we take here, you should take every advantage that you can of that though, and do it, do it on a Friday, because then you're going to have all day Friday, um, Saturday, Sunday, you, if the seller wanted it, you know, you could either do a virtual open house or, or even a live open house. But it's, it's, it's coming out soft enough 
that that you're not inviting the entire world through MLS. But again, we're in areas that we have market share, right? So there's the odds that there's a, an, a Howard Hanna agent or Howard Hanna client, or even a co-broke if one of their clients happens to see it on our site, right? We're not excluding anybody, um, but we're, we're keep keeping a little bit of a tighter control those first few days it's on the market of who's, of who's coming in. And honestly, if you, can, if you can sell it before Monday rolls along, and I think there's sometimes a really good chance that you can before um, they do have 30 showing requests and there's, you know, there's, there's 30 times that the seller's cringing because all they can think about is, you know, dirty shoes and people that won't wear masks and, you know, won't sanitize. You're a hero. Like now it's all about get as, get as few showings as you can get with a sale and you're, you're a dream agent. So I would use find it first, um, absolutely, as just a way to kind of, to maybe help ease some of their concern um, about the number of people in their, in their home. Um, and then of course, you're also gonna wanna make sure that, that you tell them that you're very respectful of the rules that they set forth for letting people in their house, right? So if that seller wants booties and that seller wants masks and that seller you know, wants to have every light on and every door open so no one really has to touch anything when they're in the house, then we definitely need to be respectful of that. And then in terms of how you get them comfortable buying something in another state, that I can't speak to as much because obviously it'll depend on where they're going and, and who they're dealing with in that, in that area. But um, I definitely think you can sell safely here. Quite the transition to find it first or hand exclusives. And before we go way too in depth, I, I know Paul, you have some stories about your Friday listings and I know you guys might not do find it first, but you do, you use the weekend the way that Ann was saying for those. I, I absolutely, I'm a firm believer in Friday listings, especially in my area. Um, I, on one of the Hannah webinars, someone from the Syracuse office used a uh, particular program, which is free online to put together a video. And I was doing some small videos, but it, it looks great. And I'll do, I have a professional photographer take still pictures um, of the property and I'll put in maybe four or five, put to music, the outside, the kitchen, maybe a couple nice shots. And it just says hitting the market on Monday, uh, call myself or your agent for more information. And those, and you gotta remember our market is not huge here. So that gets anywhere between 1,000 to 3,000 views over the weekend. And in the past, well, since COVID hit, I think I have done more double-sided deals than I ever have done. Just for the fact, it got out there on Friday. I've got calls on Saturday. I'll get my clients in, or the, the first ones in. They'll be the first ones to write up an offer if we get an offer. And a lot of times the seller is just like Ann said, I don't want any more people in my house. I'll take that offer right now. And um, Fridays are the, I, I, they are my savior days, I should say, definitely. Find It First is not big up here, at least in my market. Um, but yes, we have 24 hours if we do it on, on a weekday. And then we have till Monday if we do it on a Friday. Yeah, my videos, and I think putting out a teaser video is what I call it is the best thing any realtor could do. Right. This is true for all of you. To, I definitely want to hear from Molly and Teresa, but while I'm thinking about it, to everyone asking this question in the chat or, or sending me a message, um, there will be a follow-up with a recording of this. I will send out the paper that Teresa was talking about. And then Paul, Molly, or Teresa, if there's um, something that you discuss on this panel, if you could send it to me, if you feel comfortable sharing that, Paul, like a video or something, if you could share it with me, I could then share it with um, people on the call. Sure. Teresa, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say that earlier this year, pre-COVID, before I even knew what that word even meant, um, I made a commitment to doing more video. And it was an uncomfortable commitment to make because I didn't really want to talk. I really didn't want to be on video where it was kind of, you know, going to be able to pulled, be pulled up again and made fun of over and over. So I was anticipating a lot more um, angst about doing videos. When COVID hit, 
I just did a lot of videos. Some are live, so I could post and boost them differently. Some are recorded, um, so I could do a couple of takes and use the one that I'm most comfortable with. I I'm using the YouTube channel as well, so I can send the link to people. But often on a photo day, uh, when the photographer is there and the house looks probably the most pristine it will ever look, I tell them that before I leave, what I would like to do is spend another 15 or 20 minutes doing a walkthrough of the house. So I have it. And then if you're doing the find it first or a coming soon or whatever it is that you put into your marketing plan, you'll get calls about it and you'll have the video to show people and, and to, to get them in. So if they don't want 30 people through their house to Anne's point, if you have a few videos, they're gonna see your photos they can also do a few virtual walkthroughs. They could do a drive-by. So they're kind of going through stage one, stage two, stage three. And if it passes the interest of a buyer, all three steps, then they should be walking in your door. And that gives them another level of safety. But using a video this year, I mean, as, as much as I was um, not sure about it or not confident doing it, boy, they're much more natural now. And I think it really does boost your business. Teresa, I just want to add, I am the Hot Tub Tuesday guy on Facebook. I am in my Hot Tub Tuesday morning, and I don't, I do not have the body that I should be. You know, I've got that dad bod, and I will tell you, my Hot Tub Tuesday, I have people who want to be guests in the hot tub. I don't want to take a bath with anybody, but I'm talking to you, you kind of feel comfortable. It's like you're just talking to your friends. The more you get out there and you feel comfortable is the best you can do. Now, my wife wants me to stop hot tub Tuesdays because she's in a grocery store and people say, oh my God, is it your husband that does the hot tub? But it gets your name out. And on Facebook, as you said, you do live and regular videos. If you scroll through and look at all the, the metrics on it, your live is much more potent, and popular, and rigid than, than the other ones. And, you know, if I'm at a property, I'll do a quick live. Hi, I'm in front of 121 Main Street. You know, where this is a new listing of mine. I'll give mm -hmm. you a quick tour. I don't give everything away in any video. I want them, I, I give them little tidbits to get them interested in. And it's think, Paul, I think people, before they start asking, I'm not even going to look at the chat or the Q&A, but like you should probably send a link to a Hot Tub Tuesday because I'm pretty sure people are going to want to see that in the follow-up. So I, need, I need to know what this is all about. They got to add it to their calendar. First time I went and I met Annie at a, at a dinner, she said, I need to speak to you. Whose hot tubs are you? And I said, my own. She goes, okay, I'm happy about that. <laughs> oh, that's Holly, a good one. did you want to add anything? Um, yeah, in our market, so I'm in Pittsburgh, our West Penn multi-list, I think it's a little different than everyone else's where we can do find it first and keep it off for, I think, up to 30 days. But I use find it first a little bit differently to get the listing. Um, when I'm on an appointment and I think the seller is hesitant to like go full on to the public market, they're still preparing their home, they're not sure. Find it first is a way I can get them to sign a listing paper with me and leave the house so that they're committed. I say we can figure out our public timeline down the road. If you're in Pittsburgh, talk to your managers, but we also have to have the exclusive um, uh, listing agreement signed too. But as long as you have everything signed, you can have it as a back pocket listing. You can put it on find it first. You don't have to put it in the multi list and you also don't have to have photos or anything like that. But it's a way to get the seller to commit to me when I'm leaving the house, and then we can form the public game, um, like game plan moving forward. You know, maybe they're moving, maybe they're painting, maybe they have to find something to buy. Um, with, I think the question with the out of state buyer, if you are a find it first seller and you get an offer, you also have more leverage to negotiate maybe a, a, a further out closing date that would make the buyer who has access to this off-market listing want to make the deal work. So in Pittsburgh, we use it a little bit differently because we can keep it out of the multi-list longer, but I think it's really effective to get them to sign before you leave the house. Mm -hmm. Let's see what our next question is. I have to say, this is, I'm getting chats. I don't know if you guys are seeing this, but this panel has been amazing. I, people are, are, this is all great stuff. This is going really well. Um, oh, one that is a personal favorite. Are you leveraging the data and buy side to help you on listing appointments? Who wants to start? 
Um, okay, so I, I had a good experience yesterday with one of my managers in, in the um, Worcester office, Paul Bellman. So we had a listing in, in that office that had, I think it was something crazy like 42 showings and 17 offers like in 36 hours, something, something crazy like that. And um, so I was chatting with him and I said, well, listen, you know, now's the time to go in for other houses in that neighborhood, right? Because obviously there's some demand in that neighborhood. So um, we did a couple different things, but he is doing a, he's doing a mailing with a letter from, from, from himself as the manager uh, with, with a buy side report to uh, all, all the surrounding houses. And I think, I think I'll have to report back, but I think we're going to have some results from that. I think that that was a great idea he had. And I would encourage people, you know, leverage your listings into other listings. If you, if you get a listing, listing on Main Street, gosh, within three months, you should have another listing on Main Street, right? Um, we know how that works. If somebody in the neighborhood lists, usually one or two more aren't very far behind. So I would, I would use it in that regard. And um, I had a listing in a, a small suburb here. It was a $140,000 listing, cute little house, three bedroom. Um, I had 14 offers in one day. Wow. Out of Crazy. 14 offers, I had 11 escalation clauses. <laughs> I ended up selling the home, but four neighbors came over to talk to me and wanted my card. And I said to them, we have buyers for this neighborhood. And I had the buy side with me. And I showed them, I said, this is why this client went with me because we had 152 buyers just in our own office. Yeah. Excellent. And, you know, nobody else, other agencies can say, oh, yes, I have buyers, for, but they can't show them a piece of paper that says it. That's mm -hmm. the difference in Howard Hanna. And another level to that buy side is that with the, with the seller, um, you can actually message all of the agents that have the clients in the search. So you can tell the seller like, hey, I can reach out to 23 agents right now who have these buyers so they can talk to the buyers and bring them over. Do you print anything other than BMA, the BM? Uh, the heat map. Website? What do you print out? Molly? I use the heat map. The heat in map? Presentations. I literally in presentations, like I'll click every single page and just load it up because I don't know if my seller likes graphs or maybe they like pictures. So I put everything in and then they can decide what they want to look at. But it's all there. You kill a tree with every listing, I can tell. I email it and I bring my iPad and then I show it on there. So <laughs> I'm a millennial, so. Okay, thanks, Molly. <laughs> I can add to that too. I do bring the BMA when we make a, a price opinion. And I also talk about the home values on our website and how people will get the value of, of the home, of their home, but you could also put in any address and get a home value. And it's all gonna be driven from that BMA. So we need to pay attention to these markers. I call them markers. I said, these are, are some of our, um, these are gonna give us a range. These are gonna be the low markers and the high markers. And then I do bring the local CMAs in too. I bring the whole uh, buy side report with me. So it goes through the heat map. First, I talk about how successful our website is and how many hits we're getting on our website and how with our market share, I use the market share report as well. We know we're driving people to our website because we can capture what the criteria is for each one of these that are signed up for Real Scout. We know that these 5,000 people are looking at our criteria right now. So let's take that then closer to the heat map and then our little boxes that come down in our report. And I say some of these boxes are uh, I'll follow up with last, I'll prioritize which ones are three star and four star, which ones have a tighter criteria on them and not hundreds of thousands of dollars in their range and how we can do that from there. But I, I use that to also legitimize money back guarantee because when they see 5,700 people looking at the website for homes with their criteria, then they're already using Howard Hanna for the Real Scout and they're signing up for this. This is much more reason why they're also gonna see money back guarantee being really a legit uh, tool for them and they want to participate in that too. So it kind of does naturally feed itself, but I feel like buy side was one of the biggest gold star tools that we've had in such a long time. It marries everything together and it lets, <clears throat> it lets us talk about the next step and why we have some superior technology and why we have superior marketing and why we can be sharper, faster, selling their house at a higher price point more quickly. I don't know if Molly and uh, Teresa have seen this, but 
our competition isn't competition. If we bring exactly what we just saw, if every agent out there, there's what, 200, 300 people listening, you bring out exactly what we said, there's nobody that can compare to us. There is nobody out there. There is not another company that does what we do as good as we do it. And I should have got paid for that commercial. <laughs> oh, goodness. Are we missing any questions on the Q and A here, Kate? What? Yeah, I, I, there's a few. I'm gonna. Some are kind of like off. They're one one offs for p individual people. Let's just okay. go back to the agenda, and then we'll have time to get to them. I'm sure. Excellent. So, what are we at here? Um, gosh, we've talked about kind of getting overcoming some of the objections already. Um, I, I guess maybe what, what market differentiator is the, is the biggest difference maker for you on your listing appointments and how do you communicate the value to the seller? We've touched on that a lot, but I guess I, I would love to hear from the panelists. What are your favorite top two or three tools, right? Because one thing, one thing that I sometimes hear is, oh my gosh, we have so many tools. It can almost be a little bit paralyzing sometimes, like which, which tools should I use? You know, if you don't use all of them, that's okay. You guys find the two, three, four that, that, mm -hmm. that match, you know, what you believe in or uh, your presentation style in the hot tub or um, you know whatever whatever's going to work for you use so hey, friend, me, friend me on facebook this tuesday i'm doing one so just your, this your friends are about to rise i think okay molly <laughs> molly what are your favorite two or three um, I know I keep talking about presents, but I really love presents because you can pull any sort of document that you want um, and then you can load in all of the tools. Also on presents, there is a seller um, essential guide to selling that you can share with the seller. Um, I like to stagger when I send different things. So it gives me more opportunity to touch on them um, for different reasons. Um, I think we're gonna talk about it, but Engage 2.0, I took the webinar the other day and I'm really excited to um, really dive into that because I think that'll be a big differentiator for me. Um, and just being part of Howard Hanna, when I was newer, somebody told me on your listing appointments, you can say we, so if, you know, Howard Hanna sold the house down the street. You can say, you know, we sold the Miller's house one, two, three um, Main Street and that we have more buyers in the market. So you can always loop that in because we are a team. We have our manager, our regional, our lender, all of those people. It's like this whole squad behind you that the listing, um, the seller knows that when you're listing with me, you're getting this whole team of people um, at your service. Nice. Teresa, what about your favorite ones? Well, I'm a big marketing person. My background's in advertising and public relations. So I like to do all of the marketing tools in particular. And I feel like that's my personal differentiator. Um, I, do, I, I do really think that it's worth mentioning that the agent media marketplace and all these new signs that we have, my gosh, once you get a listing and you can use a directional that has your name on it, um, that was groundbreaking for me. I'm getting calls just on signs. I, I got calls during COVID because people said I wanted to see who was working and who wasn't working. I saw your sign, so therefore I Googled you, and then I saw what you're still selling, so I would like you to come and talk to me about selling my house. That worked about two times for me just since March. So I, I do like to use the signage. I, I really believe in that a lot. I like my marketing materials. This impress, I mean, I've just looked at it. They start emailing me here's a bunch of tools for your new listing and I'm like oh my gosh you've already made them I don't have to go back and remake them and honestly they're they're clean and they're fresh and and I uh, started printing them out already and putting them in people's homes before I even had the webinar because it was just that easy it was so easy to do it so anything that I, I use a lot of ad works I got to tell you I, I really do I don't use it always right away but if I have a 30-day marketing plan and then if I need day 31 to 60 marketing plan if I have to go beyond that I can put those in relatively affordably um, as the second wave and the third wave of marketing. And so I do like to use all of those um, other tools that are, are easy, they're fast, they're not expensive, and I think um, they help know that you have a second wave behind you. Great, that's great. Paul, anything you wanna add? Your personal um, favorites? My personal favorites, number one has to be real scout is the first thing i set everybody up with and if i meet with them out at their house whatever i always have my my computer with me i set them up before we leave they've already got an email of all the houses that 
meet their criteria. So for a, uh, a selling appointment, perfect. Um, I hook them up with Real Scout. I hook them up with our app, our personalized app we have now. Before we leave, I text them and have them have that app. And one works together with the other. It's kind of similar, but you can see everything that's going on. They can send you messages, it's great. And Teresa, as you said, your signage, um, I have a pose, my arms are crossed. It's all over the place. I use it in the paper. All my for sale signs have it. My um, directionals have it. Mm -hmm. And to the point I see people and they do my stance when they see me. Because, you know, <laughs> Paul, I see your sign all over. I can have 10 signs out. They think there's 50 out because you're constantly seeing that sign. And I think any agent that doesn't have a particular picture and they're not promoting themselves is a mistake. I don't care what you look like. I'm an old man and I think I look okay with a little touch up from Adobe Photoshop. But I think it's important that every agent stands out. And yes, Real Scout is one of my best tools. Um, the app is great. And then now with the new Engage, the campaigns are so much easier to put on. I did it, I, I shrunk our screen when we were going through it and I was doing it at the same time. So, you know, I've got stuff out now newsletters uh, everything and i think keeping in contact is great and it's only a click that's the most important thing um i do a lot of canva i don't know if you have used canva before and, and that's how i do a lot of my 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 static impressions and i'm going to try the new impress to see how that works but i'll tell you if you do anything any tool put your people in real scout very important and can i chime in on this one too Please. I, I just want to give two things just that I've seen from training, uh, from the training um, perspective, and hopefully you all will agree with me. Um, well, first off, there's a, uh, there's a presentation that most managers should have. If you don't, you can email me. I can send it. It's called The Power of One. And it's a true story about how one listing ended up becoming like seven different uh, connections, sales, whether it was a sale, another listing. Um, and so when we say that, you know, we are a listing company, that's what, that's where your business is going to stem from. Um, you want to get those listings. And I would say probably one of the most underrated, uh, it's not a tech tool and it's not a program. Um, it's not even been discussed, but, uh, I think someone, Teresa just kind of mentioned it, which made me think of it, are signs. If you can get a listing with your name on a sign writer and your phone number, I mean, that is free advertising. Everyone on that street sees it. That's really what you're thinking, right? You want, you want that free advertising. You want it on a busy street. You know, you're thinking of that listing that's on the corner of that really busy street. And you're like, oh God, that's going to be a tough listing to sell. Well, how many people are going to go by and see that name? You know, that, that's, a, that's an opportunity right there. So when we're talking about Howard Hanna programs, tools, ways to get listings, your signs, absolutely. I mean, um, put the, if, you, if you're waiting for the post sign to get up, if you've got a stake sign, put it there with your name the second you're available, you know. The second the, the house sells, try to keep your not your name writer on there. If something is, is sold, get that sold sign on it with your name for as long as possible before they remove the post sign. I, think of all those ways that you're, you're trying to get more business from that one yard sign. Um, can, Paul, can I interrupt for one second? You can just take over. <laughs> um, about I've been in business four years in real estate. So about just when I started, I had signs made look like my for sale sign that said sold by. It was the same, it was the, the larger signs. And when I sold a house, once it closed, you know, your buyers love you at that point. Geez, can I put my sign on your, on, in front of your house? It wasn't my listing. I had them up constantly. It got a little flack at the beginning. Some people were a little upset, but that's okay because they don't make me any money, those people. But I will tell you, if your buyer allows you to put a sign on their house after it's closed and it wasn't your listing, I would automatically do it. If you don't want to just buy the regular signs, use your sign and buy riders that said sold by. I would definitely put it on. Definitely. Wow. Very nice idea. Oh, somebody said something. Look out. Don't let him take over. <laughs> yeah, Paul, you've been, you've been a topic of this chat for a little bit. I just keep reading it and letting it go. So, <laughs> um, 
so someone just said what kind of Paul, what kind of sign. So you said if you just get your own, it says sold by um, um, from the, from the sign store. It looks like a for sale sign. So mine is actually, oh, it looks like this almost. Yeah. And it says sold by on the top. Was it a post sign or was it a push-in sign or? Uh, it was a push-in sign, but I also have holes put in it so I can put it on posts if they're there. Got so it. it's multi-purpose. And did you leave it there for 30 days or two weeks? Well, week? I try to leave it up for a month when I'm done, but usually it stays up for about two weeks. Okay. Great idea. Yeah, yeah, because when your buyers close, they're the happiest, so they're going to let it you. It is, and they usually hate the listing agent because they wouldn't let them in the measure for the drapes. They couldn't get in early to bring furniture, so you are a hero. <laughs> Make um, th there's a couple of questions that I do I do want to just answer, ask them because I think, uh, Anne, you could probably have some good insight on this as well. Um, Paul, can you hold the sign up again? Also want all the panelists to know that um, the comments are coming in that this has been incredibly helpful. I mean, you guys, this has been an awesome panel. Uh, he's, yes, he's holding it up. Um, okay. Uh, Howard Hanna provides awesome tools and education for once you have a potential seller and the meeting scheduled. I can get the listing with that, but I need tips for the initial connection. What are your tips for making these contacts? So not just the referrals, the, the initial contacts. Any advice? So with that one, um, well, I'll start. So I think all the emails you get, put them into Neighborhood News and Engage, put them into Real Scout. To me, it's a numbers game. Just put everybody in and eventually something will hit. And they might not have a housing need right now, but they might next year. Their brother might need it in two months. Just keep firing those out and it's automatic. So all you have to do is put the email address in, but keep firing it out. And then when somebody has a need, they'll come to you. And if you have more out there, then you're gonna have more odds of them coming back to you. So that's what I would suggest to initiate that connection. I, I mean, I just think it's about knowing as many people as you can possibly know, right? And to remember that 24 seven, you are a realtor. And so when you're doing hot lunch at the school, when you're at your um, kids football game, if, when, if you are down at the tennis club, if wh whatever you do in your life that you normally just do because you enjoy doing it, you know, make sure that you're leveraging all those things too. Wear your pin, wear, wear your name tag. I mean, I learned, a, I learned a hard lesson when I was in sales one time when this gal that I played tennis with every week, two times a week, started telling me about how she listed her house with someone else and I just kind of was looking at her and, um, and honestly, she just forgot. And shame on me because I didn't remind her. I should have been down there playing tennis with a Howard Hanna visor on. I should have been at the football game with my Howard Hanna umbrella up. I mean, just constantly, it just needs, needs to be, you, I mean, you can have a really great fun life doing all the things you wanna do that will just feed into your your real estate business. All right, I gotta add into this just a little bit. I <laughs> ran a door and hardware business for 35 years. So I did residential and commercial. You wanted garage doors, I sold your garage doors. You want you were building a hospital, I supplied the doors, the frames. So I was out in the in the field. People knew who I were, I was. But I had a switch from that to houses. So when I had my phone. My phone's like this. My laptop has this same case on it. So when I'm sitting at Panera's and I'm having my coffee, I, even if I'm not doing anything on this computer, I have this laptop up and I guarantee you, everybody there knows who I am. Everybody knows I'm a realtor. And you'll get stopped two or three times questions about real estate. If you don't pursue, give these people the persona that you are a professional and this is what you do and you love it, you're not going to get the business. They have to know what you do. Don't keep it a secret. Yeah. Keep it a secret. It's, not, it's, oh, I don't want to put myself out there. I don't want to be on Facebook. I don't want people to know I'm doing. Well, don't be a real estate person. You have If they to see you marketing yourself, they'll, then they will believe in the fact that you can market their home. And absolutely. And that's the perfect statement to finish that up with. I have to just do a few things before we, we finish up. This is like the most spot on time that we've had. It's 11 at on the dot. Don't leave yet. Uh, for those of you um, heard uh, Anne and Molly and Teresa, Paul's last comment, go to the Bob shop, 
get some people from your office, buy some Howard Hanna gear. Right now, there's, a, there's Howard Hanna masks everywhere. What a very easy way to promote that you're in real estate. Uh, maybe you don't have a fancy phone cover or a computer screen yet, but you can go to the Bob shop and get stuff. Um, I actually always have my pin on, but it clashed with my necklace. So I, I get off with, I should not have <laughs> them on this. We got a prioritize. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, right? Uh, so, and I actually, I bought a, a workout shirt when I go to the gym. I'm Howard Hanna. People yeah. see my Howard Hanna car. It's just a great conversation starter. So go to the Bob shop, find some stuff, buy with some friends. Um, and before I thank everyone on the call, I just wanted to say, you will all receive a follow-up email with all of these things that I am listing. And if you would like something else, please put it in the chat. I will add it. Um, but Molly had mentioned the essential guide to selling. I will put a link to where you can find that. The Engage 2.0 webinar that was Wednesday, we will share that as well. I will put in uh, Paul's Hot Tub Tuesday link if you want to hang out with him on Tuesday. Um, I will share the Howard Hanna Real Estate Services flyer for you to put in your own presentation. I will put the PDF and the publisher file. It is a publisher file on GoHanna. Um, and then video links, I think Teresa had mentioned she had done some videos initially. We can probably share those. Um, and uh, um, Teresa had mentioned you, you share market share as well when you go into these presentations. So for those of you who have the automated market share feature under the marketing, I'll just mention that that's, managers will probably know it as Lala Point. Um, I will share that with you as, as well. Uh, the last thing, next Wednesday, that would be the 19th, Please register. I will put the link in the email as well. Please register for uh, the, the last of this month's themes on using HANA programs and tools to get listings. I will be on uh, with Natalie Dugood, and we are going to review uh, campaigns. We will review um, a lot of the other features on Engage 2.0. Anything that makes your life easy, that is an automated system, how you can start networking your clients. Um, I see some more. Are these all uh, thank yous? Um, be careful with Hot Tip Tuesday, you post. It. Paul, give me a good one, please. Um, all right, none of these. So these are just a lot of thank yous. Uh, so I just, um, if there's something else that you'd like added, please put it in the chat. Uh, as, as absolute thank you to Ann for doing this with me. We, we talked all week about it because I know Hobie couldn't make it. Um, Thanks, you guys. Thank you very much. Molly Finley, um, again, you guys can email uh, Molly Teresa Whittem or Paul Sacco. Uh, if you have had any questions, their names are at the bottom of the page or at the bottom of their, their picture. Um, I thought this was a fantastic panel. I was a little nervous having to do it here, but I think it was phenomenal. So thank you to all of you. If you have any final comments that you'd like to say to the group, they're still listening to you. So feel free if you've got a last tip or Paul. Everybody buy a mask. If you're not wearing a Howard Hanna mask, big mistake. Everybody asked you about it. Everybody. They think it looks like Subway, so you get to discuss it more. <laughs> I this was really, really a good, um, valuable time. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate I wanted to give one last thought as I leave. Um, I think today, at least in my market, we are going to be getting Mighty rolled out to us. And this has been teasing me for a little while, so I actually called the Mighty service and I asked for a demo, and I did the demo yesterday. And this was super cool. They're gonna tell us about this mightyhowardhanna.com or you could go to estimates at mightyhomeapp.com. And literally you download or upload, I suppose, your inspection report and you can actually ask for certain things to be estimated. You do have a monthly fee for this service, but within 24 hours, they will give you a local estimate on anything you need um, to estimate for your uh, removal of contingency negotiations. It was so easy, it was silly. They also told me that I could forward my local favorite general home inspectors and my local favorite contractors so they would be in the mix. I just think this is gonna make my job so easy uh, on the after you get a contract side. I'm so excited about Mighty. So I think when you get these emails coming out with the rollout, um, I would encourage everybody to say, this is the next big thing. We should look at it. Thank Molly, you. do you I wanna think... add anything about, about Mighty? I know there's still some people listening, so I know that you really um, like it as well. I've had Mighty in Pittsburgh for a while now. I love it. It makes it easy on the buyer or the seller side. If you do a lot of inspections um, or 
just transactions that involve bids, you might want to sign up for the subscription because you can do unlimited amounts of bids. Um, I use this almost on every single negotiation, just so we have some source of information that's not what the other side's bringing us. So Mighty's awesome, and they turn it around within 24 hours. So we're in time frames. We get it quick. I love it. Check it out. That is a Hannah. They do give Howard Hannah agents a special price. So this again is still a Howard Hannah differentiator. I mean, yeah. we have really thought of everything that could help you in the market get those listings. You know, get those buyers. Uh, from from I think Jackie always says it's from contract to close, right? You're gonna you're gonna get that contract and then it's gonna close the deal. So um, Mighty, if it's not in your market, I think it's moving around. It, it will be eventually. That's another great one. Um, and uh, I did get one more question. What time next Wednesday? Please join us uh, at 10 a.m. It would be at 10 a.m. to about 11. And it's just really about the marketing pieces. It won't be about the programs. It's gonna be a training on, um, you know, the uh, uh, campaigns and other um, online uh, automated systems. I think we, we are done for the morning. Thank you, everyone. Um, and I guess enjoy the weekend. Thanks, everybody. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Bye-bye.